Welcome back, kids. We are now at catechism question number 28, which is this. What happens after death to those not united to Christ by faith? So we, in the last uh, question, we saw that, that uh, Jesus' death and resurrection doesn't automatically save everybody, but only those who are united to Christ by faith. Well, what happens to those who are not united to Christ by faith after they die and, and into the future? Uh, the answer is they will be cast out from the into hell to be justly punished forever. It's a very weighty thing we're talking about today. So I'm going to ask this question one more time. What happens after death to those not united to Christ by faith? They will be cast out from the presence of God into hell to be justly punished forever. Uh, we're going to be looking at a passage that talks about this in just a few minutes. This is uh, often a thing that, that we like to not talk about or not think about, which is the doctrine of hell or God's eternal punishment of those who don't believe in Him. But if you think about it, this is really one of the most important subjects we could talk about. And it's, it's God's coming wrath from which need to be saved. And it, it, it uh, communicates to us how important it is that we trust Jesus and uh, hope in Him alone to save us from this. So today I brought with me a couple of things. I brought two books. One of these books, uh, I just picked off my shelf the thickest book that I think I have. Uh, you see how thick that is? How many pages do you? How many pages would you guess are in this book? Um, it's close to close to one thousand five hundred pages. That's a big book. Now I have not read this book all the way through. This is more like a reference book that uh, you would turn to different parts of it when you need it. But uh, that's a thick book, isn't it? Well, we're going to look at a passage here in a moment that's going to talk about the books being open. And what are the books that it's talking about? Well, in the book of Revelation in the Bible, chapter 20, there is a scene of the final judgment. And it says that at the final judgment, when everybody from all history is before Christ, who's going to judge the world, will be open. Kind of like this thick book. Now, the books, that's a way of referring to the record of everything that every person has ever done, thought, or felt all of our lives, uh, the record of it all laid out for judgment. Now you can imagine why it says the books. There's got to be a lot of books uh, to, to keep all that information. Now that's probably not, not being literal. That's probably just saying a way of, of God bringing everything to light in the end. But, but uh, that's an image that shows that everything we've ever done, everything we've ever said, everything we've ever thought, God remembers. There's a record of it. And that one day it will be brought out to the light for judgment. If you just had a book about your own life, it'd probably have to be a lot bigger than this one, right? Several books, maybe a whole library of books to give a record of everything that you had ever thought or done. So there's going to be those books that are opened, but the, the text we're looking at also speaks of another book. Now this one I brought as well. This one is not as thick uh, because... Uh, this one represents, in our lesson today, one single book that's going to be open. So in addition to all the libraries and libraries of books, there's also one single book that will be open. And that one single book makes all the difference between heaven and hell. And I want to talk about what that one single book is today. So in Revelation chapter 20, listen to what this vision says will happen at the end. This is what John the author says, starting in verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne. That's the throne of judgment. And him who was seated on it, from his presence earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. So one day all the dead will be raised, and all of, all of us who ever, ever lived throughout history will stand before God for judgment. So they were standing before the throne, and books were opened. These are all the books of everything that everybody has ever done. But listen to this. Then another book was opened, which is... 
And the dead were judged by what was written in the books. So they were judged based on all that they'd done, written in all the books, according to what they'd done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in it. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Now listen to the last verse of the chapter. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. You see what's going on there? If all that you have before the day of the final judgment is what's written in the books, that is, all the things you've done, if that's all you can hope in, you don't have any hope before God. The only thing that can change that, because, because the reason for that is because you've got all kinds of sins in the books. You've done all kinds of things. Even though you're very young right now, you've still done all kinds of things that deserve God's punishment in hell forever. So if, if the books are all that you have, then you don't have any hope. But there is that one other book that has opened up. That one other book that has a list of names, and it's called the Book of Life, and it's the list of those who we talked about in the last question, those elected by God and united to Christ by faith. For those people, it is not what they've done that determines where they go forever. It's what Christ has done. And so if your name is in the book of life, which is by God's grace alone, then you are not thrown into the lake of fire. You will inherit eternal life forever with God. And that's what the next chapter goes on to talk about, the new heaven and the new earth and uh, the life that God's people enjoy with Him forever. What I want you to understand, though, is that if your name is not in the book of life, if you are not united to Christ by faith, then you will be cast from the presence of God into hell to be justly punished forever. That is a very, very weighty matter. There's nothing more important for you to think about and decide right now that you are going to trust in Christ alone to deliver you from that. That your only hope is in Jesus. It's not in what you can do or what you have done. It's only in Jesus alone. So I, I plead with you one more time to trust in Jesus so that you do not face this judgment that is going to come one day. Well, let's go over this question one more time. Try to commit this to heart and understand the important truth it's communicating. What happens after death to those not united to Christ by faith? The answer, they will be cast out from the presence of God into hell to be justly punished forever. We're going to sing a song today that ties in with this teaching. And this song is about God's Holiness. It's a song we've actually done a couple of times before on these videos, but it's the song Holy, Holy, Holy. The reason this is true is because God is holy. God will not dwell together with sin. He will not allow His holy place to be corrupted by sin. And that's why He will separate those who are lost in their sins from Himself forever. It's because he will always be true to himself. No matter what, he will always be true to himself because he is holy. So we're going to sing about his holiness now. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning. Our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. One more time. and mighty 
Well, thank you so much for watching. This is actually the last video that we'll be doing for this semester of Sunday School. And so um, from here on out, this semester is going to be done. And Sunday School will start back up again in February. And at that time, before that time, we'll let everybody know what that's going to look like. But uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, remember to keep studying the Bible. Keep asking your parents to teach it to you, to read it to you. Keep studying this catechism every week. The, the questions, I'm still going to be writing about those every week for parents to, to help instruct their kids at home. Um, so never stop growing. Never stop learning about God and all the wonderful things He's done for us through Jesus Christ, His Son. Bye-bye.